Lee Barrett, who's an independent journalist, broadcaster, and above all, perhaps a China expert. I'm glad that Lee can join us now on the mother of all talk shows. Lee, thanks for uh, joining us. I don't know if you heard my opening remarks, but I was essentially saying that, in a sense, this Ukraine conflict has acted as the midwife for something new and important in the world, something mm -hmm. uh, in which China will become the uh, preeminent force in the world, a Eurasian uh, landmass from Russia to China, but bringing in uh, countries uh, like uh, India, uh, which is a gigantic economy and, of course, the second most populous uh, country in the world. Uh, the tectonic plates are shifting, aren't they? They absolutely are. I mean, um, you know, uh, we, we see just before the Olympic Games that uh, China released a, a statement with Russia to, to sort of talk about how they're, they're, you know, getting a closer relationship on things like that. And that's that's very much to stand up to what, what they see as the, the bullying of, um, of the US because the, the US want to retain their hegemony and it's causing them a, a huge problem that, that there's an economy that's, well, in purchasing power is already bigger than them, you know, so they, they've um, imposed all these sanctions on China. And, you know, I strongly feel that this whole Ukraine thing is, is just like um, an excuse so they can impose sanctions on Russia as well. You know, uh, yeah, but it's it's pretty self-defeating, Lee, because uh, I mean I've argued this for a long time uh, that as a matter of statecraft, to drive Russia and China ever closer together to the point where you now could not slip sixpence between them, and that's not mm -hmm. going to change, uh, is no, a, no, is a mean, piece of it's... madness from a Western statecraft point of view. It's not a mistake that. Brzezinski or, uh, or, or Kissinger ever made. They spent their whole lives trying to ensure that China and Russia were as far apart from each other as was possible. Well, absolutely. And I mean, um, you know, this is almost like the unintended consequences of, of American policy, you know. Um, they, they, they obviously tried to split Russia and Europe but in doing that, they push Russia closer to China. And, and I see all these Western companies fleeing Russia. And, and, and the country that's going to fill that gap is, is China, you know? I mean, Russia are energy, energy um, sort of stable. They, they produce their own food. They've got no problems there. But there's going to be this huge hole in the market in Russia for consumer goods. Well, who are going to fill that? It's going to be China. And as regards energy, you know, you have the US saying that they won't buy Russian energy. Europe obviously can't because they're dependent on it. But China are able to take all the energy Russia have got to sell and the wheat and the metals, you know. Um, we haven't even seen um, Russian sanctions properly yet. Now, they could really harm Europe. And, and I, I, I see on, on um, you know, social media, all these people saying, oh, we stand with Ukraine and X, Y, Z. And yet I just wonder whether they'll still be standing with Ukraine when their household bills are, you know, 200, 250 pounds a month higher than they are now. I, I, I just think, you well, know, there, they, there they, are, there they've are people, scored a massive own goal. Yeah, there are people whose energy bill is going to be bigger than their monthly income, people on benefits, for example. Uh, there are going to be companies that have to close because, they, especially in the hospitality sector, so badly hit uh, over the last two years by the COVID crisis, they simply won't be able to continue. Uh, there'll be all kinds of people who rely on, on diesel and petrol to move themselves and their goods around that will no longer be able to do it. Uh-huh. You know, I, I, I was speaking to um, a friend back in the UK yesterday, and in his area, it's it's the the fuel is one pound seventy plus per litre. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just it's just unbelievable. Um, it is. It's, it's, it's over one seventy almost everywhere now, uh, and uh, it, wow. it'll be it'll be two pounds a litre before very long, which 
is getting on for nine pounds a gallon, if you remember our gallons. Now, if I told uh, you or your, your dad uh, that petrol would be nine pounds a gallon, he, he would say, I'm sure, that, uh, well, we'll not be able to use the car. Absolutely. I, I'm old enough to remember the controversy when it went to a pound a gallon in the UK, a pound a gallon, you know, and now we're at eight or nine pound a gallon. It's just unbelievable. And on top of that, this will add to the cost of, of the distribution of all goods. So not only companies are going to pay ridiculous amounts for their energy, because, as you know, they're, they, they are not subject to the Ofcom um, cap like domestic users. So the, the raw materials for, for food is going to cost more. The manufacture of food is going to cost more. The distribution of food is going to cost more. You know, the, 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 the UK and Europe are in for a huge rise in, in food prices because of what they've done. And I honestly don't think, you know, when this, this uh, sort of Russian-Ukraine situation started, it was like a race between the, the US, the UK and Europe to see who could put the most sanctions the quickest. It, it was like a competition between them. Yeah, yeah. And I don't, I don't think they thought many of those sanctions through. And what I find amazing is that, you know, Europe are going to come out the worst here, the UK yeah. and Europe. And, yeah. you know, I, I, I feel as though Europe and the UK have been thrown under the bus somewhat by, by the US. Well, they threw themselves and, under the bus at the behest mm -hmm. of the US. They didn't even have to be forced to. But you're absolutely right. The US is self-sufficient in energy. It has mm -hmm. uh, or can be a certain price. Uh, it has, uh, the, the, the prairie is an ample source of food, but that is not the case in Europe. Uh, absolutely, and, and, and I really think that, that, that the Europeans and, and, and the British have no idea what's coming down the pipeline. You know, they, they're all cheering on these sanctions, and, and I, I just think that, that they've really got, a, a, they're in for a big, big shock because of this, and, 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 and I think they will... Personally, I think they will try to, to sort of backpedal on some of those sanctions as time goes on because I, the, the, the public are going to be mm. very, very sort of angry. Well, Russia might not the allow future. them to. Russia's taking quite a hawkish attitude when McDonald's... I mean, the Russian people are going to be pretty healthy uh, from now on, Lee. There's no Coca-Cola, <laughs> there's no McDonald's, there's no Pornhub, and there's no CNN. It's going to be the cleanest place to live. Uh, in the continent. Um, uh, yeah. so, but as soon as McDonald's pulled out, Russia nationalized all their property uh, and mm -hmm. is uh, giving, I think, half a billion dollars to uh, small and medium-sized companies to come up with their own fast food uh, um, uh, industry. That's pretty smart going. Actually, the rate they're going, Russia will be uh, much less capitalist uh, than it was before this crisis began. Absolutely. I mean, you know, R Russia, I, I think the West thought the, these, um, you know, sanctions were going to sink Russia in w within weeks. And Russia are used to sanctions, you know, they, they've dealt with them before and they'll deal with them again. And, and, and I think they, the, the, the West, have, uh, you know, uh, the, the EU have already said they've maxed out the financial sanctions. Germany have completely shot themselves in the foot. You know, it, it won't be German cars going into Russia, it'll be Chinese cars. It won't be German consumer goods and European consumer goods, it'll be Chinese consumer goods. So I, th I really think China w w are in a very, very strong position to fill that vacuum. And I think it, it's also interesting to, to cite the phone call that um, Blinken made to um, Wang Yi, the, the Chinese foreign minister. And I, I think he probably wishes he didn't make that call because... China firmly told the US that China believes that it was squarely them that created this problem. And, you know, it's up to them to use diplomacy to sort this problem out and, and not add fuel to the fire, which is what they are doing. China, China very much sees that the US are just pouring fuel on the flames by introducing more sanctions and, and continuing to suggest they're going to send billions of dollars of, of weapons to Ukraine. And China don't forget the mercenaries, a... uh, Lee. The, these mercenaries oh, yes. are increasingly the way of war uh, of countries like the United States and others. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it really seems from the actions of, of, of the US that they want to drag this war out for as, as long as possible. And as, as you, um, you know, alluded to earlier, Biden, it's his perfect excuse now to, to hide what the problem is in, in America, inflation. Oh, it's Putin's fault. How the hell is it Putin's yeah. fault? It's squarely sits well, with, with the banking, Biden this one. Yeah, has. they're banking everything on that. I myself predict that it will not work. Uh, that people will say, well, well, is it uh, Putin's fault? But even if it is, we can't do anything about him. Uh, but we can do something about you. Uh, and I feel that uh, a, a lot of political turbulence is likely to occur uh, in Europe, in Britain, which doesn't do much in the way of political turbulence, uh, but even in the United States. Now, look, in the time we've got left, I'm fascinated mm -hmm. by your story. Uh, you've got 340,000 subscribers and you're uh -huh. in China. How did that happen? How did you get to China? How did you start blogging? And how did you get this enormous audience? Okay, so um, I've, I've been coming to China for, for 15 plus years and I've lived here permanently for the last four and I started coming here initially on business. I was having products made at, at factories and, and, and I kind of fell in love with, with China. It's, it's an amazing country. And when I moved here and, and as I was going back to visit family and friends in the UK, I saw this massive disconnect from what I was experiencing and seeing in China and what Western media were reporting about China. So we started um, vlogging, um, me and my son, Oli, uh, we started vlogging about our experiences in China. And the, the Western media picked up on that. And, and pretty much we, we had the Times do um, a, a, an article on us, then followed by the BBC, then followed by the New York Times, all accusing us of, of being paid by the Chinese government to, to say good things about China. And that gave our channel massive exposure and, and, and this, you know, our subscribers mushroom from there. And it's absolutely ridiculous that, that the Western media have this, this view that anybody saying positive or good things about China can't possibly be saying it because that's what they think. They think that they can only be saying that because they're paid to or coerced to. Well, you know, they, we've think, had... uh, they think everybody's like them. Uh, they are prostitutes. Uh, they write what their owner uh, wants them to write. Uh, and they think everyone's like that. Uh, absolutely, George. I mean, the, the reality of it is we have a f you know, much more freedom to report what we want to than most of those people working for mainstream media who have to follow the line of, of what their editors um, and ultimately the state wants them to write. I mean, we've just seen this with, you know, the, 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 the White House have just gathered a group of um, top influencers together to TikTokers. brief them. Yeah, to brief them on their line on the, the uh, Russian-Ukraine situation, you know, so... Who is now influencing the influencers, which is what we got accused of? I'm not sure anybody of an age to be on TikTok is likely to be much persuaded by Joe Biden. I'm, I doubt if he even found the language in which to uh, uh, speak to them. Tell me, how do people follow you? Um, you can go to our channel. If you go to YouTube, just search Barrett, B-A-R-R-E-T-T, -T, and you'll find our channel. Fantastic. It's been a real pleasure talking to you, Lee. Thanks very much. Thank and you best, very much, George. Best regards Appreciate to your boy uh, also.